This video will walk through how to set up the aircraft configuration setting for the Lynx product. The first step, of course, is to have the USB connected to the Lynx unit. The first step towards configuring the unit is to actually change the settings in the configuration module. To do that, we'll first need to connect to the unit. So under Connect NGT9000 USB, we're going to switch to maintenance mode. So we wait for that to connect. And under Service and Restart Unit, we make the second selection on the radio buttons to the maintenance no Wi-Fi connection and then acknowledge that below with a Restart Unit. From there, we will need to reconnect to the unit. So we move back to the top of the screen on the drop down, click on the USB. And now to move into configuration items as a general class, we hit setup and configuration and modify. Here there's a number of menu options, but today's exercise will be the aircraft specific settings. So we click on that. And the first entry is the tail number of the aircraft. So we will enter here an example, just a NH4567. And then next is the mode S address. Now for the mode S address, if you don't happen to have that handy, it is available via the uh, FAA site. It's at registry.faa.gov. This could be looked up. In this case, if we were going to change the mode S address, we get a warning here that indicates that several features that have been enabled would now be lost. So we're going to decline that for the purpose of this exercise. It is worth noting that the mode S address and the enablement codes are tied together so that if you do change your mode S address, you'll need to re-enable with different codes those respective features. First option we have is a transponder diversity or dual antenna option. Uh, this is another enablement code option, but uh, if it is enabled, one needs an enablement code. If it's to stay disabled, there's no particular code that's needed. In this case, we're going to leave it enabled. Active traffic enable, another enablement code, or through order admin, you can get an enablement code that corresponds to your mode S address. So we're going to leave that one as TAS enabled. Ground filtering altitude. This is a feature that allows you to have your ATAS and traffic alerting disabled when you are below 380 feet AGL. So the standard selection allows that disabling so one does not get what might be a nuisance alert while in the landing pattern close to the ground. The alternate setting will allow alerting below 380 feet and all the way down to five feet. The last selection is, the next selection is the directional antenna type, where there is a difference between the NY-164, which can be used for TAS exclusively, and the NY-56, which is a higher accuracy antenna designed for the TCAS. It is worth noting that if you already have an NY-156, that is compatible with the TAS. The traffic extended callout enable allows additional messages to be heard when enabled, the additional messages tell you the direction, range, and vertical sense of the traffic. For example, traffic two o'clock low, two miles, as well as the vertical sense of climbing or descending. So that may be a useful feature that one would want enabled. For the antenna installation, given that we have diversity enabled, we are only offered one selection, bottom omni and top directional. However, when other options are present, such as the task being disabled, we will then have bottom omni or bottom omni and top omni. So there are some four additional selections that are possible with this. The only valid selection when TCAS or TAS is enabled is bottom omni and top directional, as we see here. For the FISB enable, we have the ability to select disable to deactivate winds and temps and FISB textual data screens. The only reason one might want to do that is if you're flying consistently and exclusively in regions that do not have FISB coverage, Canada, Mexico, some uh, areas away from the United States where this FISB feature is offered. Typically, this is set to enable. Auto might be for those operators that will be crossing the border from FISB coverage to non-coverage. And what that prevents is uh, what might be a nuisance indication that the FISB or um, 
ground station coverage has been lost. If you know it's going to be lost because you're traveling into Canada, it would seem logical that you'd not want to see that message. So that's where the auto selection comes in. But if you leave it enabled and you fly into Canada, no problem, your unit won't fail, but you will get an antenna indication indicating that you're out of coverage. The TISB ADSR service indication enable is showing you that same TISB non-coverage, a little antenna symbology seen in your traffic display. You can disable that feature entirely, but it is useful to see that you are out of range if you're planning on flying oceanic, for example. Then we move into categories that describe the ADSB out of the aircraft, uh, part of the message set that is delivered. So one item is the broadcast category, which is really just the size of the aircraft. So there are various sizes listed here. The FAA website can help with that. But for example, the light setting is for an aircraft less than 15,500 pounds. So we're going to select that today. Uh, a small aircraft would be between 15,500 and 75,000. And a large is greater than 75,000 pounds, just to give you a feel for those. A pilot entry of flight ID can be disabled or enabled. If it's disabled, the unit will default to the tail number in the flight ID broadcast that it comes out. But if you enable it, each flight, you'll have an opportunity to enter a flight ID specific for that flight. Aircraft length and width code has just a number correspondence, but when you select that, you can see the upper bounds length and width for a box, if you imagine a box that would surround your aircraft. So you want to select the minimum size that will contain the size of your aircraft. So it might be anywhere on this list, but I'm gonna choose arbitrarily 180.4 and 147.6 for the respective length and width and click on okay. That puts us into code eight in the corresponding number. Max airspeed is also part of the broadcast. Uh, we just indicate what value is the allowable airspeed for this aircraft type. Arbitrary number of 250 knots being applied here. The GPS antenna offset is the length width from the nose of the aircraft to where the GPS antenna is mounted on top of the aircraft. Also the lateral distance between the center line of the aircraft. Change here from cyan to white. There is no particular regulation in regard to this. However, it's just uh, operator preference. ATAS enable gives you the free ability to get additional traffic alerting that is based on ADSB position. This had previously been a enablement code item, but as of 2019, this is now free of charge, so one can select enabled, but be aware this can provide alerts that are much like a TAS alert. The two systems are actually complementary in that you can have ATAS enabled, but if you are overseas, over the ocean, oceanic regions, you will not have ADSB coverage from the ground, so TAS is a nice backup system to have for that. Uh, so ATAS doesn't give you full coverage, but it certainly gives you coverage when you are in continental U.S. areas where there are rebroadcasts taking place, or anywhere for that matter where other aircraft are ADSB out enabled, uh, where you don't need to rely on the ground rebroadcast. The terrain display enable is specific to having the TAWS enabled, and that requires an enablement code as well. In this case, we are disabled, but one can go to a display only TAWS for a certain amount of money or for a larger charge for an enablement of actual alerting that would be along with the terrain images. And there's two different sets of oral phrases that go with that particular TAWS system. In this case, we are leaving it in the disabled mode. And last option for the aircraft specific is the storm scope. In storm scope, we have an external storm scope system that connects to the panel mount specific links unit. And when that is enabled, that image of the local storm systems and lightnings is shown on the links unit. It can be either enabled through a bottom or top antenna. In this case, we are assuming no storm scope is attached and we leave it in the disabled setting. After all the desired selections are made, in order to have this applied to the unit, we will then press the apply button at the bottom of this page. We get a warning message that basically wishes to reassure that we've done the right thing. We press yes to continue. And now we see a right to the DCM and a right to the NVM backup has succeeded. 
The DCM is what travels with the aircraft. It's a portable memory unit that is attached to the wiring harness. That is what is most desired. The NVM backup is indicating it's also been written to the unit itself. So this is the full success of a configuration setting.